Good morning. <clears throat> Happy New Year. Welcome to my channel. Today is the 1st of January. <clears throat> Excuse me. 2024. Let me flip the calendar over. I don't know where January is. January first. Oh, something is stuck here. Wait. Hang in there. It says there are things that is worthwhile to search after. And one of these things is love, to be loved, to love someone else. It's worth to dig after or search after, even if we have to dig or search deeply. The calendar, there is little sayings for every day, you know, from wise men that are wiser than I am. <laughs> okay, so we have a diamond painting that says coffee is like a hug in a mug, see? I was working on it a little bit <clears throat> and I found that it has a lot of confetti but there was a little problem with the five symbol and the S symbol they look about the same and about the same color so I was really having a rough go of it. Let's see where I am here. I have been practicing beaded cross stitch. Nice and shiny. Okay, let's see what we can do here with this mess. So I think I'm going to go with the uh, symbol P. Now don't tell me round drills are popping. That's impossible. Round drills never pop, do they? I love the canvas the picture, but like I said, I, I ran into some problems. Now, they could be from my eyes being tired, you know. Contrary to popular belief, I do get tired. So, let's see. If we can find the symbol P. No, 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 don't dump all over the sticky stuff. No, no. No, we don't want to go fishing for diamonds. Now, you know you don't belong there, so why are you here? I have a brown one that doesn't belong here. If all else fails, Get the tweezers. Okay, let me see. Let's 
Je ne vois que le point de vue. So it's going to be a fishing expedition to look for the symbol P. Now there's 29 colors in this small canvas. That should have been a good warning that you know we are going to have confetti since i'm sticking to the canvas i might as well cover it you know i know you love lowly rolling on the floor watching me struggle but i prefer not to stick to the canvas you know now if all else fails I'm going to grab my magnifying glasses. Well, I was supposed to really have surgery on my eyes. But then Rona got in the way, and a heart attack got in the way, and everything got in the way, and it was, um, there's no pee there. What are you looking at? Yes, I talk to myself. Actually, I'm, I'm extremely critical of myself. But I think most of us are. Anyway, that I have seen other crafters. Um, we tend to be overcritical of the work we do. Although... I have been told many times to uh, stop comparing my work to what I see. You know, I learn from YouTube, from other videos, and I was told, stop comparing, especially when I first started, you know, stop comparing yourself. And I was like, yeah, but what they do is perfect. Why does mine not look like that? Well, for the very simple reason, which I have told you a zillion times, is because we are all individuals. Therefore, our handmade crafts have the stamp of our individuality on it. See? This is why it doesn't look like the sample that you were looking at. It took me a while to figure that out because I was rather disappointed. I go, why can't I mine look as good as that? And then I calm down. And once I calm down and stop kicking myself in the shins, I realize that I have my own style <clears throat> and it's perfectly fine. This is what makes it unique because this is my own style. Hmm? I saw a pea somewhere up here. <sighs> if I want to be completely honest and frank with you, I am so happy the holidays are over. I think I had enough of the holidays to last me not only until this December, but perhaps a few years forward. For some reason, I just couldn't get into the holiday mood. I do think 
since I got over Rona just before the holidays, perhaps I was still uh, feeling the effects of uh, getting over the virus. But still, I was actually forcing myself to try to get everything done as if <coughs> as if nothing was wrong and I might be stubborn and have the will to do things however my body was going like <sighs> can't keep up so maybe that's why it was so difficult do you think so? Finally, I see some color blocking. Color blocking is a way to move a little bit forward. I really did not think that this diamond painting would give me any problems. But, okay, it will just go slower. At least it's not a holiday diamond painting, you know, not a Christmas one. You know, like, I must finish by Christmas. I have a whole year to finish by Christmas. <laughs> right? <laughs> so actually, if I want to get something big done for next Christmas, maybe... Maybe I should start now. Mm -hmm. I will make a video. I was trying to learn how to cross stitch with a frame. Well, let me tell you. I made some extremely weird poses trying to figure that one out. But I did have a good laugh at myself, looking totally ridiculous, you know. I mean, it was like if I had four arms, make it I could get the hang of it, but finally I did manage. Now the thing that I noticed, I think my stitch looks better doing it on a frame rather than doing the sewing method in my hand. I actually think so. Well, it could be because I was doing it slower. I don't know. Um, I notice if I start to speed up, it's time to quit for the night. What? What is this? Why are you not sticking? Okay. I do have an extra vial of glue, you know, like this, in case there are spots that are having a problem. Okay. Really having problems with seeing this. So I help myself with a magnifying glass. As long as you can still do it, even if you need extra help, I would say do it. At first when I looked at cross stitch, I was like, I can't see this. Um, I don't know if my eyes adjust to what we are doing after a while. Because it seems like that to me, that even with the diamond painting, once I get acclimated, you know, to, the, uh, to what I'm doing, that's different from cross-stitching, um, then I seem to be able to make out, well, this is, uh, 
very small and very confetti, but still, um, once I do that, I'm able to make out um, the symbols a bit easier. So what we're going to do is do it nice and slow. It will get done, and it's going to be so cute. Now this one, I have already picked a place for it on my kitchen wall, next to the wall, next to the coffee and tea maker, is empty, so this will be a perfect spot um, for me to put it there. Don't ask me why this is tilting, but it is. No, I can't. Uh... That's about it. I'm going to check if there's a screw on the back of that. Maybe I can tighten that and that will solve the problem. I did kill my other tripod. I plugged it in and the cable fell out and it pulled out with it, you know, the thing that you plug the cable in and nobody could repair it. I was sad because I love my Olivia. Really, it's the best setup so far. I had other ones that kept on falling over. <laughs> yeah. Camera, diamond painting, everything falling over. And I'm like, sorry, did anybody get hurt? <laughs> yes, we had some weird times in this past two years. We're going to be two years old on February 14th. The channel is. <laughs> really, when I can't see, um, that's when I usually. <coughs> Give it a little rest. And then after that, usually I have no problem seeing it. Now, what I did see, the, there's a symbol five. I'm trying to find, and there's a symbol S right there. And they look about the same. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could see it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, with my videos, it, sometimes you see, sometimes you don't. Because I have a tendency to walk out of the picture. And I would have to go to the other desk to see what you are seeing. And that really would be absolutely no purpose for that, my would there. I'm baking chicken for dinner. I have some lentils and some chicken beans. Oop. So today is a relaxing day, getting ready for the work, going back to uh, hubby was off for two weeks. Well, tomorrow he goes back to work, school, etc. Getting back to normal life, you know. 
I think it's always a bit uh, hard after you've been on a long vacation to get back to normal routine, but we're going to do it. You see, I'm actually fishing for this symbol here, there, and everywhere, trying to find one. Um, very scattered. I don't see any reason for it, but I didn't create this picture. Somebody with more talent than I have. I think we're going to go with the symbol V, because from what I saw, quite a bit up there, so we can do move a little bit ahead, you know, with some uh, color blocking. Ah, it's supposed to be a white. Shake, shake, shake. Roll them around. Try to line them up. If you're multiplacing, you want your diamonds to line up. If you're single placing, it doesn't really matter. You can just pick them up. So I presume this is a background color. It's a small uh, diamond painting, but still it's going to take quite a bit of time for me to do this. It's not going to be a fast one because of all the confetti. Well, you know, I adore gnomes. So, this is the only saving grace. <laughs> yes, when I get into difficult uh, pattern, for me difficult, let's put it this way, because it's not really difficult. For me, it is right now. The only saving grace of these diamond painters is the fact that I'm in love with them. Otherwise, I would not be doing it, you know? You know how it goes. I mean, I pick out the diamond paintings because I love them. And now that I started cross-stitching, I do the same with cross-stitching. Well, that's even slower, of course, but I'm not worried about it. I am enjoying it. After I learn what I'm doing, oh, I got a lot to learn. Oh, don't, don't think I don't. But um, after I learn the basics of it. Well, you know, the other problem is that I love a new craft. I love the challenge. But once I learn it, then in most of them, I will lose interest when the challenge is not there anymore. Now with the cross-stitching and the diamond painting, I've been doing it now for a few years and I have not lost interest. With the cross-stitching, I just started and now that I learned the basics, I have not lost interest. So I think that's going to be something that I will keep on doing. I also have socks in the making. Um, I don't want to forget how to do um, the German short rules. Because that was difficult for me to learn. I want to keep up, you know, with what I learned, obviously. Do we have any more V's down here? I'm going to do this before I get to the color block and go over there. Oh, 
Okay. Well, at least I'm seeing a little bit of progress. I'm wondering what I can say when I'm doing this side. I'm noticing now that I'm more um, used to this canvas, that it's easier for me to make out the symbols. This is what I was talking about. I wonder if there are long-term sy symptoms that are left over after you get this virus. We won't mention the unmentionable name of it. That's what it seems to me. And then I have the question, why was I poked so many times? But then, okay, I didn't wind up in, in hospital. I didn't wind up in, you know, emergency, whatever. So, yeah, I can see the positive effects of getting jabs. If you have no health reason why you should not get jabs, yeah, get it. Because it might keep you out of bigger problems. My opinion, I'm not a doctor. I do have training, but I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be. Actually, it was worse this time than the first time. But then I presume we have a different variant, so the symptoms will be different. Is that it? I'm presuming. My husband goes, we go to Sopran shopping one day and you come back infected with a virus, that's it. I'm going to wrap you up in saran wrap and put a label on your delicate, keep away from her. I'm not delicate. Anyway, I don't think I am. I'm wondering about a lot of things, but the doctor is not answering any questions. You know, like, did my recent heart attack have any um, impact on my immune system or ability to fight off what normally I would fight off? I was wondering about that. But I'm not getting any answers. Hmm? Then the doctor figures, figure it out for yourself. I can't be bothered with inquisitive little ladies, you know. I got people's lives to save. A patient might cooperate a lot more if you give them the answers they are looking for. They might cooperate in the method of treatment, etc. if they are given 
reasons why they should be doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's just, again, my opinion. What do you think? If I'm ordered to do something, I will not do it. If I am asked to do something or explained why I should do it, I will do it. I'm not totally uncooperative, according to my husband, just mostly. But then, you know, it's his job to complain and whine. He's a man. What are you supposed to do? Told him you're supposed to suffer in silence because you're a man. <clears throat> and he's like, where is it written? I go, well, in my book, it's what you're supposed to do. Suffer in silence. And he's like, <laughs> funny. I go, yeah, well, give it a shot anyway. So tell me, how was your holidays? Are you as happy as I am that it's over? Usually I enjoy holidays a lot. Like I said, this year I found it very tiring, very exhausting. My old age creeping up on me. to give it some reasons, what do you think? It's, Christmas starts so early that by the time you finally get to it, by December 24th, you're so over it. I think that might be one of the problems. And of course, we had snow for one day. And of course, I do live in a place where there are problems across the border. So I think many things um, played into um, Grinch mood. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. What is that, Scrooge? What's that song from Grinch or Scrooge? I think I was a Scrooge this year. Really was not intentional because I put the effort in. Okay? It was just me personally. I put the effort in for the family, of course, but it was really a struggle. And I had to take a lot of pain medication to be able to, to do the basic cooking, baking, tree. Oh, I did not like the whole idea this year. Yeah, I just wonder, you know, this year we're going to have Christmas again. And I wonder how the Christmas of 2024 will come here with the Christmas of 2023. Do you 
ever wonder about that? Yes, I know, it could have been worse, a lot worse. So I have no reason to complain, don't misunderstand me. It's just the whole, I love holidays, love to decorate, go all out, you know, all in it, 100%, it was just missing. There were fire, uh, there were um, shooting fireworks even this morning, <clears throat> although it's against the law. A lot of people have pets and the pets go totally crazy. I think if you know your pet is going to go crazy, maybe you should uh, ask the vet for something to calm them just for that one night to sort of save you and your pet the heartache because um i don't know i don't remember my children ever you know having a problem with fireworks or things like that Well, we don't have pets, so, but I have heard a lot of people complaining that it does take its toll, all the firecrackers and fireworks and all the other stuff takes its toll on a pet, so I think I read it somewhere where the vet can give them something to calm them down for that one night help them get over it. I mean, you're not going to stop people from celebrating, so, you know. Even pet owners will disregard the fact that they are upsetting their pets and will do fireworks, etc. I think it has come into common knowledge by now, um, you know, a lot of pets being so scared, they run away. They're trying to run away. They're not trying, they're running away from you. They're trying to run away from what they perceive as danger. I think it must be an instinct. They hear boom, and obviously they want to run away from it. You think so? That would be my opinion. I mean, if we go back to our basic instinct, you know, I think if you would see fire or flood or somebody shooting something, you would have the instinct to get away from there. So I presume that's a basic animal instinct. You know, like they don't want to go near fire. If I was using my logical thinking, yes, I do have logical thinking occasionally. I'm not always crazy. I have not been swearing. I've been behaving. Of course, now that uh, minimums so repeat everything you say, uh, <laughs> I do have to be a bit careful, you know? He's like a little parakeet. You know how you are. You worry about the child not talking. And when they start talking, the only thing you can tell them is shut up already. Right? 
you want a child to start walking and you keep on telling them, sit down. Yeah, we all do it. Must be since the beginning of time. I don't wonder, what did Adam and Eve use for diet bread? Did they? Or did they just let nature take its course? And who was teaching them how to die for a kid? Hmm, sometimes I wonder too much. So they, they would not have had cloth. Oh, if it was animal skin and fur and what have you, that would be like waterproof. No. My husband would say, you're talking craziness, you must have a fever. Really, I don't. I don't think so. Or some turned into a threesome over here. Oh my goodness, let's behave. See, what a bit of color blocking right away. It looks like I made great progress. I really, there's no reason not to color block this. The background color. I have enough problems with all this confetti, you know. Excuse me. Usual runny nose every time I sit down and do this. And I walked out of the picture. Mm -hmm. Sticky. This thing is wobbling because, because I don't know. Nope, there's nothing underneath it. Church is still playing Christmas music because you know the Orthodox Christmas is coming up. 
Now it's the Roman Catholic Church, but um, Epiphany, Three Kings, is a big holiday. And for the Orthodox Christians, that's when Christmas is. And January 6th, I presume. No, that's not an A over there. That's F. Well, at least I noticed that it's a different symbol. So this is what I mean when I get used to the uh, canvas, then I can see the symbol without any problem. This is weird, isn't it? I presume uh, my eyes have to adjust to the new craft that I'm doing, something like that. So we're going to have confetti over here also. Okay. Well, at least I can see those symbols. It was on the five and and the S symbol. They were almost identical and the same color. Now if they were different colors. would have been probably easier to distinguish one from the other, but they weren't. So that's what made it difficult. Okay. We're going to be working on this for a while. <laughs> By the time I get through all that confetti, but it's going to look fantastic on my wall. And actually, that's the important part of it, the end result. Because this is what we're doing it for. And for the sparkle. I was surprised how much um, the beads in the cross stitching were sparkly. You think they're glass beads? I don't know one from the other, to be honest. Um, this is something I'm just learning. So I can't tell one bead from another. They're round and they have a hole in the middle, but as far as it goes. Are there different beads? I think I, I saw on YouTube there are plastic beads and there are glass ones. One of them had, of course, no instructions in English. It was Chinese. I don't speak Chinese. So I was like, okay, shall I learn a new language? I tried a Google Translator. Um, nope. That did not work. The other one is 
probably from Ukraine, not sure. And I don't speak Russian or Ukrainian. That's hard to figure out, actually. I did figure out that it's a nine count, the Chinese one. Well, it's beautiful. I mean, I don't care what language it's in, it's beautiful. And that's what's important to me. And there we we'll go here. Okay, now they're in the wrong place over here. Let's straighten them out. Well, I see we have quite a lot of this, so <laughs> maybe they will cut down on the, on the confetti. So we have some color blocking and then we have some confetti. <laughs> okay, no problem. At least that way it's not boring, you know. Okay, come out. Okay, we'll put this over here and then we'll put that over there. My wonderful neighbor wants to come through the wall. I guess where they come from, they don't use doors, they walk through walls. Okay. Everyone has their own traditions, you know. She hasn't managed to realize the fact that it's a concrete wall. The outside walls are massive. This is a newer house, so they were already into, you know, insulation and trying to save on heating and stuff like that, as opposed to the other ready-made houses, you know, that were built um, after the Russians left. Um, they had to insulate it after it was built because in the summer it was too hot and the winter you couldn't heat it warm enough. So it was letting out the heat and the cold. And then there was a problem of having um, the house too insulated have you heard of that? That the house couldn't breathe and there was a problem with uh, moisture being trapped and mold and mildew and things like that. I never thought about that, but I can see the logic behind it. I mean, we exhale some particles of moisture you know, we wash, 
a shower, stuff like that. Even if you have a fan, it's still a certain amount of moisture. Um, goes on the house and then you're not opening windows because you want to save on the heating and the cooling, which is a bad thing. You should still air out um, the house. And this is a good example why. So, I guess the moisture has no place to go, presumed. I don't know, because this new apartment that we're in, comfortable. I mean, I have not even seen a cobweb. There are no little creatures running around. Two-legged or four-legged. Yeah, children are not allowed. So I listed the cat, the kid as mini monster. And they go, do you have a child? Nope. Nope. I have a monster. It does not say in the contract that you cannot have a monster. See the logic? Yes, he was a complete surprise. It's one way to um, lay the contract. It does not say you cannot own a monster. Does your contract say you cannot own a monster? Believe me, after that, I looked over at the uh, contracts I have for my building. <laughs> Make sure I put in there. No, you cannot have a monster either. <laughs> Maybe somebody else will get the same idea as I do. Well, in the village, you know, you don't have that. You cannot have children or pets. Because everybody does. <clears throat> and there's plenty of room, you know, in a village house. So, perfectly fine. But in a small apartment like this, you no, know, you don't want like a great day, you know, what have you, and 10 children. I mean, would definitely not be very healthy, I think. And putting a big dog in a small apartment, I do think, in my opinion, it would border on, you know, torturing that animal. Let's remember, we call them fur babies and whatever. They are animals. They have animal instincts, animal needs, and wants. They are not many humans. Even though we love them so much as if they were, but they aren't. And don't be surprised if an animal will act like an animal. Because that's what they are. They are born with instincts, just like we are. Yes, I know, shocking. We do have instincts that we are born with. One of them is to breathe and to eat. I mean, you don't have to teach a newborn baby to eat. They are born with the instinct 
of wanting to survive, and that means breathing and eating, right? Argue with me. Go ahead, I will still stick to my opinion. I don't care if you want to argue with me. It's my opinion, I'm sticking to it. When I see a dog attacking, usually a reason behind it. Maybe it was mistreated, or maybe it's hungry, or lacking love and attention, was not trained the correct way to be among humans. I don't know. Or maybe it's just its basic nature. I mean, there are good guard dogs, there are good working dogs, dogs for different reasons. And you cannot blame them for acting, you know. This is how the Creator made them. So this is how they act. Simple. I thank you for being with me on the first day of 2024. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be happy. And I will see you later on. Goodbye for now. Mwah. Bye.